Now I've got a question for y'all. Do you ever find yourself so frustrated with those fish? You try all day, you throw everything in your tackle box and you don't catch a single stinking fish and you are ready to take every single rod and reel tackle box you own, smash it over your knee, throw it in a wood chipper and spread it across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, me too. I felt that exact same way. And there is only one thing that gives me any sort of hope that I can catch fish on days like that. The days when the fish do not cooperate, the weather is tough, everything is stacked against you as an angler. And that is called a confidence lure. In today's video, we're gonna talk about confidence lures uh, for certain scenarios, what my favorite confidence lures are for both lakes and ponds, and we're gonna help you guys discover what your best confidence lure is for yourselves. Let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Uh, my name is Tyler, I own this channel and I love to teach you guys how to become more efficient bass anglers. And uh, kind of the direction I'm taking this channel in 2020 is a, is a highly instructional angle. So I'm still gonna do the tournaments and the fun videos, but I really wanna use the knowledge that I have to teach you guys how to become better bass anglers. That way you guys come back to this channel all three times a week, the three videos that I upload every single week uh, and leave after watching those videos, encouraged uh, and, and knowing how to catch more bass in more scenarios. That's always the goal of, of at least my channel here on YouTube. So if you guys are not subscribed, click that subscribe button and uh, let's jump into the content. So in that intro, I brought up the situation of, uh, you know, being out in the water, whether you're on a pond, lake, river, stream, uh, and not having any sort of luck. I'm, I'm talking like not a single bite. Uh, the fish are just completely locked jaw. They are not wanting to eat anything. And I have many of those days a year. You know, me as a YouTuber, I feel like sometimes it's, just, it's deceiving that you guys think that we fish every single day. First off, that's wrong. And that we, uh, we always catch fish. And that is definitely wrong. I have so many days a year where I have only one, two, three, four fish or I get skunked. And uh, those days happen and they stink. But one thing that I learned from uh, some fishing mentors when I was first starting bass fishing was how to develop confidence lures for certain situations. You know, in this video, I'm gonna talk about my two favorite confidence lures in general, but really this topic is much more broad than just a singular lure, a singular confidence lure, because you're gonna fish in so many different scenarios if you are a uh, you know traveling bass angler like I am myself, or if you just like to fish around ponds in your neighborhood, you're gonna have different scenarios which dictate different confidence lures. And I'm gonna kind of separate it into two or three categories. I'm gonna go with uh, a Highland Lake category, which is this kind of lake right here we have you know pretty clear water rocks a little bit of sticks basic one sec folks one sec <clears throat> hold up i don't know what that was but i want to catch it all right sorry folks apologize for the uh, slight sidetrack there i did see a fish bust and heard him bust over there i wanted to see if i can catch him but like i was talking about we're going to separate this video today into a few categories to help you guys decide for you what uh your confidence bait could be now, before we get started, disclaimer, you know, everybody is different. Everybody likes to throw different lures. Nobody's the same in terms of their favorite lure or how they work that lure. That's the, be that's the beautiful thing about fishing is that nobody's the same and the fish are never the same. So it's always a new challenge, a new puzzle. So I'm not trying to tell you guys what your confidence lure should be. I may uh, distinguish that your confidence lure might be a bladed jig by the end of this video. And you're gonna go out and you're gonna hate throwing that thing for some odd reason because you just don't like bladed jigs. So uh, don't feel the need to listen to everything that I say in terms of my suggestions to you specifically for the category that I'm gonna talk about. But I feel like I'm just trying to, I'm trying to cast the, the, the largest net, the biggest blanket that I can to help all of you guys at home decide what your confidence lure could be. So. It's gonna be a little bit of you know my personal opinion mixed with, I think, just general bass fishing knowledge. So we're gonna hop into the first category, which is a Highland Lake situation. So we have on this lake today, you know, pretty clear water, maybe five, six foot visibility, usually clearer than that out here. Uh, we have some deep, you know, rocky bluffs with a little bit of wood mixed in. And these fish here are gonna be a little bit more migratory. They're gonna kind of move around. And so there's two major confidence lures that I could say would work on a body of water like this. One would be a, uh, a shallow or medium 
premium diving crankbait as I filmed a video on just now. That video will probably be already out on the channel, so feel free to click up in this corner to check out my instructional on uh, shallow diving crankbaits. But it's either going to be that one for those fish that are migratory feeding on bait fish, or one of the confidence lures that I'm just going to talk about in general is my favorite confidence lure is the shaky head. So I'm going to get to that one a little bit later in this video, but I think for these types of lakes, if you want to consistently catch fish, you may have to turn the trolling motor on high and really buzz around the lake all day throwing a crankbait around, but I think that's the best way when the fish are in a funk to at least try to up your chances of running into fish. You know, if you're going to slow down and throw a jig over a point, you know, you may catch a bigger bass that day, but I think your, your likelihood of having a really fun day out on the water is a lot less when those fish are in a funk. And that's why I suggest using a crankbait on a lake like this. So now going into situation number two of three, I'm gonna say your uh, woody, grassy, pretty dirty your water lake, kind of your East Texas, Louisiana lake. Now me being a Texas guy, all of my information is always going to come from a Texas point of view because I love living in this state. Although I do travel to Michigan, Minnesota, New York, Alabama, you know, quite often, I do like to use the knowledge that I gained here as a, a native Texan uh, to help you guys catch more fish. And so I'm going to kind of talk about that secondary lake, that, that, that Sam Rayburn, Toledo Bend, East Texas type lake uh, that you guys have all across the country as well. You guys are have a lot of the highland lakes but you're also going to have a lot of those lakes that are mostly grasses whether it's eelgrass or hydrilla milfoil mixed in with some wood and maybe a little bit dirtier water and you know those fish are probably going to feed at least in my opinion on bluegill you know bluegill is an incredibly high protein source of food for bass and especially around grass bluegill really thrive because they have plenty of places to hide uh, and raise their young that didn't make any sense uh and just uh reproduce away from the bass you know in a lake like this bluegill are not the, the fastest of fish compared to a bass and so they would have a harder time surviving in a lake like this whereas big schools of bait fish and crawfish definitely have a better time on a lake like this so talking about those grassy woody lakes i like to throw a reaction lure and that's going to be a bladed jig that's going to be my favorite reaction bait for that body of water but you're going to have to do some experience experimentation for yourself on those bodies of water it might be a texas freak cinco it might be uh, a jerk bait or an underspin really you're going to have to figure out which lures work best for which type of situation uh, that way you guys can find your confidence lures and i would suggest finding that early because the longer you go out in the water and the more days you spend out there and you bring all your tackle boxes with you and you don't have a, a lure that you have utmost confidence in you're going to be continually struggling with catching fish uh, especially on those hard days because you don't have your confidence in one thing it is sometimes uh, risky to have such confidence in a lure that you don't throw anything else i'm not saying do that i'm saying when the bass are not biting anything else throw this one thing that is what a confidence lure is and so for those grass situations I just think a bladed jig like the Strike King Thunder Cricket is just an incredible option for that type of situation because it imitates a bluegill or a perch perfectly. You can reel it fast, slow, you can pop it out of the grass, you can let it sit in the grass, almost work it like a jig. Uh, it is an incredible lure for that situation. So that's going to be my confidence lure for that area and I'm assuming it's a lot of y'all's as well. And then situation number three is going to be a pond and I'm going to vastly generalized ponds uh, by all the ones that I have kind of around me and that is usually a mud clay or sand bottom with pretty dirty water a little bit of vegetation uh, mixed in not a whole lot in the middle of the lake but a little bit of vegetation probably within the first 10 to 15 feet of the bank some ponds just having that little weird uh, almost like hyacinth grass growing along the edge that is your classic farm pond and in my experience with that, you cannot beat a weightless fluke or a weightless Texas rigged Cinco. And so it just depends. Whatever you guys feel in that scenario, I just find that if I try to throw a crankbait or a shaky head or a jerkbait, that just doesn't have the same confidence appeal for me as those two other lures do. And so with all that said, make sure you guys are um, you know continually trying out different lures to find the one that you are most confident in. I'm just I'm naming off ones that I think, in my opinion, I have confidence in and can catch fish anywhere across the country. And so with those three situations covered, and of course all the gear will be linked down below that I've talked about, I'm going to talk about my two favorite confluence sewers, one for a lake 
doesn't matter if it's uh, a grassy lake or rocky lake, just in general, which lure would I have to pick if it was a confidence lure? And then which lure would I have to pick in a pond if it's a confidence lure? So we're gonna hop on the trolling motor. I'm gonna talk to you guys about my favorite confidence lure for a lake. And then we're gonna hop over to a pond and I'm gonna discuss my favorite confidence lure for a pond. We're gonna go over how to rig them and hopefully catch a, fi a few fish on each one. Let's do it. So starting off with lakes, my confidence lure is going to be the shaky head. I love the shaky head. I feel like it applies in so many situations across lakes. I mean, I can throw it in grassy. I can throw it in rocks. Uh, you know, the confidence lure will change from time to time, but overall, I would say a shaky head is my confidence lure, especially when the, the bike gets tough, like right now. The, the clouds were out earlier, the crankbait bite was on, and then as soon as the clouds dissipated, we have high pressure rolling in. It's gonna make the, the bite for those fish a little bit harder to achieve, and so I love pulling out a shaky head. And you know, I wanna make this video pretty short, it's probably long enough already, but the reason why I love a shaky head is because it's kind of a do nothing lure. You almost, I mean, the name shaky head implies that it's you know supposed to be shook or shaked, whatever that word is. In, in my experience, a shaky head really is just kind of a drag and hop lure, much like a finesse jig or much like a Texas rig, except you know, with most shaky head heads, it is designed for that worm to stick straight up in the air. And so it just, in my opinion, entices bass a lot better than a Texas rig does. I find if I, if I were to throw you know, a Texas rig Cinco versus a Texas rig, sh I mean, versus a shaky head Cinco, in this exact scenario right here, when that, when that bite is tough, I think a shaky head is just gonna get more bites. And maybe for you it wouldn't, maybe for you it'd be a little bit different, uh, but my confidence is just in the shaky head in situations like this. So what I do with the shaky head, you know, most times I just cast it out there, I let it sink to the bottom, I leave a little bit of slack in my line, kind of shake it and kind of give it a hop or a drag. You know, the, the head that I'm using is called Spot Remover. I'll have it linked below. It's not a sponsor of mine, but it's just a really good shaky head. I have a lot of confidence in that head design uh, just to make the, uh, the worm stand up. And of course the fish are gonna have to tell you where, where they are in the water column. So a shaky head is a bottom bait. You're not gonna catch suspending fish with a shaky head. And so the fish could be in five foot of water, they could be in 10, 15, probably all the way out to 30 feet right now. And so <clears throat> it definitely takes a little bit of time to find where those fish are. But in my opinion, if you wanna catch fish, like just go out there, have a good day catching fish. Uh, my confidence lure is a shaky head. I have filmed many a video and had many a tournament where I was struggling, didn't know how to catch them, pulled out the shaky head and ended up having a decent day by the time I got back to the ramp. So. That is what I do on a lake, is I throw a shaky head. There's one, there's one, yes. Yes, sir. What do I have? This is big. Whatever this is, it's big. There's no way this is a bass. This has gotta be a catfish. Another Gasper goo? My goodness. This is unbelievable. These things are crazy. Oh gosh, man. Well, I was struggling to get bites. I put on the shaky head and I got one of these suckers. Gosh, that thing hit it like a freight train. I was not expecting to catch a goo. That right there's a freshwater drum. Kind of cool fish, not a fan of them, but this lake's obviously got them today. Caught one on my other video. Gee, that thing hit like a freight train. Well, now that we caught one on the shaky head, I think it's time that we head over to the pond to talk about my favorite confidence lures to catch those stinky, finicky bass in a pond. We'll see y'all there. Well, folks, we've made it here to one of my favorite ponds here in the area where I live, and I want to talk about confidence baits when it comes to ponds. So most of you guys watching this video and across YouTube, I don't know percentage-wise, but most of you guys do not have boats. If you do as a kayak or a John boat, most of you guys don't have bass boats like I do. Even though I love to make videos that, that you know, pander to the tournament, you know, hardcore bass guys, I do like to make uh, some, uh, you know, applicable points to the guys that are fishing ponds. And in 2020, I'm actually going to be doing a whole series on breaking down ponds ponds, fishing ponds, catching big bass in ponds, just like a whole pond series. But when talking about a confidence bait in a pond, you're a lot more limited in terms of 
uh, the types of cover situations you have. So in a lake, you know, I'm thinking of a lake such as uh, Lake of the Woods uh, in Kenora, Ontario, one of my favorite lakes in the world. It has rocks, wood, clear water, dirty water, every type of grass physically possible, I think besides uh, hydrilla, I don't think there's hydrilla up there, uh, or milfoil, maybe those two. And it's such a diverse lake. But a pond like this, and most ponds, you know, residential ponds, farm ponds, retention ponds, they're very, very uh, simple. They either have grass, they have wood, they have one type of water clarity, uh, and they're pretty small. And so I like to keep the bait very, very simple when it comes to ponds, and that is a weightless Texas rigged fluke. This here is the Strike King Caffeine Shad in my favorite overall color, which is pearl blue glimmer. It is a just very, very standard pearl white with some blue, uh, you know, on the top of the, of the bait fish. I do like a four inch over a five for ponds, especially if the bite is tough and I need to catch fish. But I mean, most times when I come out to a pond, you know, even if it's not a hard day, even if I just need to catch some fish just to have some fun out there, I'm throwing a weightless Texas rigged fluke. Uh, if the water is a little bit deeper, let's say I'm fishing like a rock quarry, if the water is a little bit deeper there, as it would be then a pond like this with just, you know, mud bottom and grass, I might throw a belly weighted fluke, but I just have so much confidence in this bait because every pond has tiny little minnows, either this size or a little bit smaller, and every single pond has bluegill. And so I just feel like this bait cannot be beat. So we're gonna take a few casts and hopefully catch a few for you guys. I just got a backlash, that was smooth. And one thing I wanna emphasize here with both the shaky head in lakes and the weightless fluke in ponds is that most of my confidence lures uh, don't really require much action. You know, when the fish are in finicky mood, that's the number one tip I can give people is to never overwork your lure. And especially with these two, the weightless fluke and the shaky head, I mean, the slower, the better. I don't care how aggressive they were yesterday. You know, today is a different day and if the bite is tough, you're gonna have to do things slower. And so in ponds, when I'm fishing a weightless fluke, I'm usually just casting it out there, letting it sink all the way to the bottom, which may take a while if it's a weightless fluke. And then I just kind of hop it off the bottom like that and let it sink. And on a day like today, when it is just gorgeous outside, not a lick of wind, completely calm, I can really focus on my line to see if my line jumps. And that's one thing uh, it's really, really important when you're throwing a weightless plastic. If you have the opportunity, make sure you're watching uh, your line to see if you get a bite. But like I said, just super simple, not a whole lot of action to it. You know, you can work a fluke, you know, with your, with your rod tip down, really giving it a lot of action, a lot of twitching. And that's good for, you know, South Carolina bass. Like I know Lake, uh, Lake Hartwell, Lake Kiwi. Um, what's the Lake FLW you had their cup on? Lake Murray. Uh, I mean, a lot of those lakes over there when the, when the bass are feeding heavily on bait fish, even, I mean, even a, even across Texas when the bass are feeding on bait fish, you know, giving it a lot of action can be good at times, but when the bite is tough and I need to catch fish, it is just a cast, sink, lift, retrieve. You know, those fish are gonna eat it. Gonna hopefully get one on the last cast, but uh, if I don't, that's how it goes. I just enjoy being out here, and that's one thing that I hope you guys, you know, enjoy from my channel is I just love going to catch fish. You know, I, I could vlog, going to the gas station, and I could, I could do all that lifestyle stuff, and. Who knows, I might eventually, but uh, right now I'm happy making fishing videos about fishing and hopefully you guys enjoy. So if you guys do, hit that subscribe button to be a part of Team TRF. That is what you guys are a part of right now if you're watching this video and I want you guys to be a part of it three times a week. Every single week, baby. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. If I catch this fish, you have to subscribe. You have no choice. Just like in every single video, all the gear that I use will be linked in the description below. It is a pleasure for me to make you guys these videos, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of Tyler's Jewel Fishing.